All right, let's do this. The Goonies panel. Please welcome Sean Astin, Joe Pantoliano, Corey Feldman, Kihu Kwan, Kerry Green, and Robert Dobby. Give it up, the Goonies panel. All right, keep it going. There we go. Once again, you have a question, raise your hand. We'll get to you. This is going to be a great panel. Switch your microphones on. Make sure everything's good, and we'll check everything out for you. It's going to be on the bottom or the side. I thought they were on. I thought they were on. There we go. There we go. Hello. There we go. Yes, we are. Welcome back again, Sean. Good to see you again. You look great. Thank you. How many people are from Pittsburgh here? <laughs> How many from Virginia? How many from Detroit? <laughs> West Virginia. There we go. Wisconsin. Okay. Tennessee. And that's all the time we have for our panel. It is so great to get you guys all here together. If you don't mind, it's great to see you again. It is so good to have you all here. And uh, if you don't mind, we just want to get to some questions for you with you guys. Is that good? Can I ask you, what, what is your name? I've never... Time. Let's go. All right, let's go. Six. It's, it's Mike. It's Mike. Nice Mike, to meet you. Nice How's it doing, Pittsburgh? There we go. We're hey. Right. hey, Joe. Awesome. I have a recommendation. Right. I have a recommendation. Yes. Get a 60-second clock. Okay. And when it reaches it, do a big buzz sound because any one of us will talk for 45 minutes. Got it. Internal clock set to 60 seconds. Let's get our first question. Hands up. Let's do this. Hey, guys. It's wonderful to talk to you all. Uh, my question is the Swenson's ice cream that's featured in the Goonies. Um, did it, any of you all get to eat a lot of the ice cream when you're filming the Goonies and what is your favorite uh, flavor if you got to? No, it's a bit of a sore spot. That was the other storyline. We didn't get to participate in that as much. Well, wait. You did. <laughs> you did. You did. Did you eat the ice cream? You got to eat the ice cream, didn't you, Joey? You didn't eat the ice cream. Davi, did you eat the ice cream? Actually, Joey kept taking it from me. He, he, he took it out of Chuck's hand. Chunk, chunk, man. I Get said, the name right. You were in the damn movie. Come I on. <laughs> I said chunk. I said he took Nobody's it out of Chunk's hand. Nobody's been the judge. You I, guys be the judge. I said he took it out of Chunk's hand. I said Chuck's hand. I said chunk. I and now about it's time. Uh, child's play, USOB, child's play stop it. The 60 second clock has passed. Time for the next question. Okay, it's an honor to meet you all. The Goonies is my second favorite movie of all time. Anyways. Get him out Next of here. Next question. Uh, oh, Second. come on. What? Gladiator, Shawshank love... Redemption. What, um, what's your favorite? Mary Poppins. Oh, all right. <laughs> Anyways. I'll, so I'll accept her. I'll accept that. I, I like infamous, Mary Poppins. The infamous octopus scene. Tell us about that. Key. The octopus was very scary. Thank you very much. We're done. Good night. Oh. Thank you. No, I'm just joking. Just joking. All right. I got a question right over here. All right, uh, my question is, uh, if, if any of you were to be a, this is kind of a, a Corey question, if you were to be a vampire, which one would you want to be? A turn blood, pure, or familiar? Okay. Well, we're getting real deep right now. Um, I would probably have to say a familiar. All right. Any one of you? Yeah. Okay, let's get another turn, turn blood for me. I got a question over here. I thought there was just one Dracula. What are these vampires? What's the, <laughs> that what's was the in difference? 1923, Robert. <laughs> it's still my favorite, Bella Lugosi. Yeah, that was back when you were a kid. We all remember <laughs> his childhood. That's right. You should remember. <laughs> That's right. Question on the far side. Right with you, Doug. Okay, right over here. Hi, this question's for Sean. Um, is it true that the reason you left the commentary recording early was to hang out with Joe? Since you left early in the commentary? Yes, yes, it was true. Uh, Joey had a, a, a short film festival, and I had agreed to introduce him at the short film festival. And so in the middle of the Warner Brothers documentary, which would go and live for all time, I said, I must go now. I've told my friend I would introduce him, and so I did. Yeah, nice. Very nice. And a question on the other side of the room right over here. Let's knock these out. 
If you were to do a follow-up, a sequel to The Goonies, how can you, what would you imagine seeing each of your characters doing at this point in time? There you go. Well, for those of you who don't know, Sean and I actually wrote a really great treatment for where The Goonies could go next. And it was, to be honest, a really awesome idea that Dick loved until he realized how expensive it would be. And then he didn't love it so much. But anyway, yeah. I told Dick my idea. Uh, do I get to choose what, oh. where Andy goes in her, in her life? Yes, please. Mike, Mikey can choose what happens with Andy. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Hey, now careful. She's a married woman and her, wife, her husband is here in the audience. Well, I think I we had her divorced to brand. <laughs> 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 it sounds but, like a love triangle movie. Uh, very different movie. Very different I don't movie. Know. I think I come into my own, as she said, and we go off into the sunset together. There we go. Nicely done. I well, had a subplot for the Fratellis. And Mama Fratelli had passed away. And she's in Potter's Field. And Joey and I, and because I sing, Joey was managing my singing career. <laughs> Francis, but he was, ripping, he was ripping me off, of course, telling me, who cares? You, you don't need money, you're just singing, just sing. So he's ripping me off. We go to our mother's grave to exhume her body because she has a secret to where the maps are. And we exhume it, and then Joey gets his harebrained idea, or Francis' a harebrained idea, of getting in touch with Mikey to try to figure out where this place is. Anyway, so we, I told that to Dick Donner. It's in the works. There it's in the works. <laughs> you can hear a pin drop. Listen to this. Right? Look That's at the, excitement for you. This is like, <laughs> the way they're looking at us right now, I don't think they like that last idea. All right, let's go to this question over here. No, so, they so. love that idea. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> All right, I'm ready to answer this. Do me one favor, one favor, right? Because I got to put this down. I want everyone to say, "Great idea, Robert." Great idea, Robert. Thank you very much. Kay. Thank you. And you can so, pick up your five-dollar bills on the way out of the door. Joey has them for you. There you I, go. I really, I really love what Corey and I came up with. And and uh, the one little moment was we have a brand working in the docks, like he was a, a dredge, like he had a dredging company or something. And, and Who's so- Who's pumping the lights? I don't know, but it was getting good. They, as soon as I start telling a story, the lights go down. And so I go to him one after, you know, it's like the sunset and I'm begging him, please let me go out, please let me go out. And he's like, I've taken you so many times, like I know where it is. So he and I go out at, at sunset and we go to the place where the inferno sank. And he has the tanks and I go down, down, down into the inferno and into, Willie's chamber and I go under the table and I've got a knife and I figure out how, where there is, uh, well, anyhow, go on from there. Yeah. We, there was a, one no, idea was- the cool part one, one about I, the, the whole time travel I know, thing. I know, I know, hold on. So, so what, we have uh, Andy, so it's a museum. They're gonna open it as a museum. Like, you know, they put a hundred million dollars into it and they can go down into the caves and it's set up like, the, like a world-class museum. And Andy comes, it's gonna be the, um, the, the opening night or whatever, and you've been hanging out in, in, in Europe, in England, and one of the princes loaned you one of the Spanish jewels. One of the Spanish jewels, and so you bring it, in, in, order, to, in order to have it in our, you know, this is, we're famous, and so, so she brings it back, she's like, Mikey, you can display this, this is from the thing, and I'm like, oh my God. So we all go back down to the, where the ship room was, the cave, and the two of us, Data and I, oh, maybe all three of us, we go up, and we, <laughs> we put the jewel. You're not doing a great pitch here. On, I gotta say, hold Sean. On, hold I like on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Body better. We put the jewel <laughs> in a little nook and we turn the lights out and revealed on the ceiling of the cave are the stars. And what is revealed is a map to the Canary Islands where the real ships are there you stored. Go. There you go. Yeah. And, okay, wait, it gets better. So check this out. So there's like a, this crazy, so Data is a scientist, right? And he's working on this really revolutionary, futuristic time travel stuff. 
Okay? <laughs> so somehow data has to help the Goonies. We all well, have to get CERN, back together. It was the CERN Super Collider. That's and, right. And He's working the, at CERN. Yeah. and they, they The crashed. Large Hadron Collider. This is very heady stuff, right? <laughs> and he figured out how to do it on a palm-sized thing to crash the atoms together. And it actually opened up a space-time continuum. And we went and we got to be in the actual Spanish Armada. And I meet one yes. of them, Willie in the pirate <laughs> Could ship. Could you imagine the that? The Goonies going back in time to be on the actual One-Eyed Willie's pirate ship. There you go. How amazing would that have been? Now, wait a minute. See, Joey and I... Okay, now wait, can we get a real reaction? <laughs> Hold on. Where's the camera now? One second. Where's the camera now? One second. <laughs> Our movie, the Fratelli movie... <laughs> oh, now it's its own movie. <laughs> we create oh my God. Bitcoin. We're counterfeiters. So me and Francis come up with the idea for Bitcoin and call ourselves Satoshi Nakamoto. <laughs> you understand? And we kind of wipe it all away, right? Joey loved that idea. I'm just picturing in the street, a bus goes by, and it's just a, a black poster, and it says, Fratelli's. Yes! <laughs> I actually want to see that movie. Frite I want to see the Fratelli's right. movie. I, I kind of want to see that, too, actually. The funny thing is, when you were saying that, I actually heard Dick laugh really loud behind you. I heard, ha, 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 ha. Like that, yeah. Okay, I only have the opening, but this is it. <laughs> Jake and Francis are released from prison. They're getting signed out, and the box comes out, the envelope, you know, with your stuff, your possessions, and it's a hairpiece, and it's Jake's hat. That's all I got. <laughs> That's a trailer. That's There's the trailer. trailer. There's the trailer. I like it. <laughs> okay, question on this side of the room. Let's hit another question. It's a great trailer, great uh, teaser. What do your kids think of the Goonies? Have they... Do they say anything? They've seen it? What do they think? I keep my kid far away from anything I've ever done. <laughs> <laughs> He's in good company. Hey, hey. I think mine feel protective of it. Right? I do. I think they, they don't really talk about it. You know, when they watch it, they watch it kind of stoically. You know, I don't know what they feel about, like, the campy stuff in it, but I just feel like that's their dad's thing. They like, they like it. I think they like it. Yeah. My kids love it. I tell you a quick story. I was came home one night from filming, uh, at 11, 11 o'clock, ten thirty. My two daughters. I have six daughters and two boys, but the, they're sitting there at seventeen and sixteen, and they're sitting in the living room. There's about eight guys and one other girl, and I come in, like a tough guy, and I go to each kid. Stay away from my daughter. You're in trouble. Stay away from my daughter. You're in trouble. Stay away. And my daughters are there smiling with the biggest smile on their face. They say, Dad. They're here to meet you. They love Goonies. <laughs> that totally disarmed me. Then they all became my good friends. I took pictures with them. They, they love the Goonies. <laughs> Carrie, talk to us. Oh, um, my kids do not like to watch it with me. They say I ruin it because I'm so busy saying, oh, that was the day that you know Martha almost beat up Corey, or this was, you know, I kind of am rem remembering all the different things. Of the Why was that the like anecdote? Out of six <laughs> months of shooting, that's the one thing you want to bring. Because I had, I've, I'm sorry, I forgot, but I, yeah, so they love it, but they don't like to watch it with me because I ruin it because I you know, take away all the magical. Okay. Yeah. Will, Will, Will she look wonderful? Yeah. She looks amazing. She looks amazing, doesn't she? She still has that little girl youthfulness, mm -hmm. I remember. We, we, there's 500 people in here who will wa watch it with you. I'll watch it with you. That's right. Yeah. Carrie, uh, Key, I mean, Key, why don't you tell your story? No, my, my answer is really short. I don't have any kids. There you go. <laughs> it's a fast I like, story. I like it that way. <laughs> no, but I, I do have a, a grandson. I mean, I'm, I'm a, a godson. How did Sorry. that? You're like Jesus. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I look great for my age. <laughs> Mother Mary. <laughs> no, I have a godson. I showed it to him one day, and uh, and it was, I think it was like a long time since I, I've seen the movie. I saw it with him. He loved it. I loved it. Uh, and I think it holds up, you know, really well. So uh, there we go. Immaculate keyception. There you go. <laughs> Let's get a question on the other side of the room, Doug. We got one over here against the wall. In all the movies you've worked on since Goonies, which would you say has been your favorite and which compares well to Goonies? Who's this to? Everybody. All of you, everybody. All of you. Sean, Down start. the line. Sean, go. Um, my favorite movie. Well, I did a movie in Oregon that was sort of a love letter to community theater called Bigger Than the Sky, and my mom was in it, and she played, she kind of reprised her 
uh, identical cousins thing from the 60s, the Patty Duke show. And uh, so that's, yeah. Yeah, love my mama. Yeah, and the, but I mean, so we filmed in Astoria, Oregon. So it was Portland, Astoria. How did it hold up? It held up pretty well. Nothing can, nothing can hold a candle to the Goonies. The Goonies is a one, one-off perfect thing. Absolutely the Goonies. Absolutely. You know, that wasn't the question. The question was, what was your favorite work since the Goonies? <laughs> and has it had an effect on you in the same way? Oh, thank you. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I've actually been miserable since the Goonies. <laughs> true, true. <laughs> <laughs> but whatever it was... I can say The Goonies. Matrix. The Matrix was my favorite movie you've done since the Goonies. Yeah. You were great in that fucking yeah. movie. Thank Sopranos. <laughs> Talking about experiences, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, what no. was your favorite experience since the Goonies? That's it. <laughs> There's nothing else. Well, it's, an, it's a good point, though. There's a difference between, like, the story and, the, and what it is right. to the movie. Yeah, they don't and then make the... movies like that anymore. Yeah. When we were making the movie, it was all real stuff. We had the loop. You know what looping is? We had to loop the entire movie because all For the water machines. For six months. Or, no, three months. We, we were spent. looping while we were shooting. You know, so they don't make movies like that. Everything's practical. It was all real. This, you know, the kids sliding down. Those were like, they got that from Action Park, the water parks, and they put things to make it look like it was the tunnel. So it was all so much fun and swimming in the swimming pool during lunch and six day work weeks and call sheets, but I well, remember- They still do six day work weeks. Yeah. That hasn't changed. But, but honestly, <laughs> at the studio. Uh, and also, they never knew who they needed, so the call sheet was like everybody had to go to work. Remember that? Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. You, when you say they don't make movies like that anymore, I think some people might think you mean like movies that have that type of story, that type that of vibe, You're saying that vibe. the way Practice we made way the we movie, made the, movie the way, they don't make movies the way we made that movie. We it's had absolutely four true. units. It was like you had the Spielberg unit, the Donner unit, you had the ILM unit, you had Frank Marshall coming over and doing a, you know, pick up shots. It was yeah. like. And the octopus was very scary. <laughs> okay, Robert, same question. Uh, I mean, uh, you know, there's a lot. There's, when you do a film, you, you, you're like a microcosm of family. So there's a lot of experiences. You meet people and you become family. And Goonies has been the most lasting family. And uh, it has that, uh, that cult and that uh, popular cultural uh, aspect. No matter where you go in the world. I even think Josh Brolin was on Jimmy Fallon one night. And, and Jimmy Fallon had the headband, the Josh Brolin headband on. And Actually, he, Josh came and, out with the outfit and on. He, right? gave one, he gave one to Josh to put on. Oh, is that what and, it was? And, okay. and he said to Josh, of the films you've done, which is the one that you get most stopped for? And he goes, Goonies. And I was just in Belgrade for two months. I was in Italy before that. No matter where you go, Goonies is a film that everyone loves. And Dick Donner, God rest his soul, said to me, while we were filming, he said, this is going to be the modern day Wizard of Oz wow. for a bunch of people. He foresaw that, and I got to tell him that. He was right. He was right. He, I got to tell him that. So I would say the, the family atmosphere of Goonies, and the, uh, Joey got me in trouble one day. <laughs> Robert, <laughs> Robert, I, Robert, we gotta get down the line with this go. question. Everybody has go. the same. <laughs> Come to my booth later, and I'll tell you He'll how tell Joey you got me in it. trouble. Kerry, same question. Come to my booth, you'll save you a long story. <laughs> I tell it a lot better, because I know things about Joey nobody knows, trust me. Um, Goonies was essentially my first job, so I thought all movies were like that. <laughs> so after that I did um, Summer Rental and Lucas, and they were both very special and really so different. So it was... Um, not one pirate ship in either of those two movies. <laughs> there, there was, there was the, the weird thing was. And no good-looking guys either. That's yeah. true. Yeah. But the, um, the, the weird thing was that summer rental was, the sailing ships, and then in Lucas the, cheerleader the team was the pirates, so. I kind of felt like that was my whole, you it's know. A motif. It, it was a motif, a and I motif. would not ever make a film without one of those things. Anyway. <laughs> Even as a director. Oh. oh. <laughs> you gotta have your Easter eggs, just like all great directors. Yeah. You gotta have your Easter eggs, right? Yeah. There you go. I now, next I movie you direct. Next movie you direct. Make sure you put an okay. Easter egg. There I'll you put go. Some pirates in it. 
exactly. Key? For me, uh, I don't think anything is going to beat the experience of filmmaking, I mean, making Goonies. Uh, it was really memorable. But I think, for me, what made it even more memorable is that watching the fans and how much it means to them, I mean, it's really, like all of you guys, make the movie even more special after all these years. Uh, and I, it's just one of the greatest experiences of my life. And I don't think uh, we can ever top that, you know? Uh, it's like sitting here with my family. This is, you know, this is one of the happiest moments for me during this entire pandemic. I mean, I've been holed up in, in my house for the last two years. And just to see all of you. <laughs> yeah. And to hear this, wow, it's just been incredible. Pittsburgh, thank you so much for having us. Uh, this is, this has been, this so been a humble. Great weekend. Yeah. So yeah. freaking humble, right? You. Don't you just love that? <laughs> Such a humble guy. Watch, what? we're all gonna be dead in 18 days. What, what, <laughs> what, what, what pandemic? <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ. <a> pandemic? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Negativity. Yeah, He's nice. always negative this all one. Right, can I answer the damn question now? Jesus. No, I have to answer that damn. negativity. All right, anyway, um, for me, uh, you know, and it's, I think everybody hit on this, but I, uh, everybody hit on me. I mean, everybody hit on this. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no. Uh, when I, I did, a, I did a movie, that? I did a movie, uh, that I really loved. My favorite performance was a film called The Birthday, kind of like Sean. It's a little movie a lot of people didn't get to see because it was an independent film that was never even released in America. But my favorite work the favorite work that I've done as an actor that made me feel like I was doing something fulfilling. But you can't compare that to something like this. And like everybody has said, when it comes to the family element, first of all, I wanna say one thing. Today we are making history. You are part of that history because this is the first time in 35 years the six of us have gotten together without Richard Donner calling us and asking us to. Wow. No, I mean that. So God bless Dick. We really miss him. He's our dad. And without him here, it's very strange, but we're still grateful to be with each other. So thank you to, to the convention, to Robert, and to everybody who came for making this even more magical as our first time seeing each other in several years and our first time ever doing this without Richard Donner here. So thank mm. you. Thank you. Excellent. We have a question way on the other side of the room. We're kind of ping pong over to this side, right here. And your question? My question's for Sean. First off, I love all of you. This movie was my life, my whole life. So thank you so much for making it. My question, Sean, was... Where, was where, are, you, where are you? I can't I'm see I'm right here. I'm six. Oh, there you go. I'm sorry. Okay, I see no. you now. Was it, your kiss with Carrie your first kiss, and was it awkward or was it awesome? Great question, great question. Well, anybody who's ever, do you want, I'll go first. Car Carrie should really speak into this issue, I think is important. You have something to offer with this? Yeah. I know, I know. I just like watching you talk about it. But um, what I would say is that um, anybody who's ever asked me what my favorite part of uh, working on the Goonies <laughs> is I, I've never said the water slides. I've never said riding the bikes or anything like that. It's very clear what my favorite part of working on the goodies was. Um, the problem was that Steven Spielberg had an experience with Henry Thomas on E.T. where apparently after that wonderful moment where the frog, he lets the frogs loose and the wind is going and E.T.'s watching that great black and white romance movie and, and so he steps on the one kid and he brings a girl in and he kisses her and... Quiet, yeah, quiet. Is that what it was? Yeah. So and then and then uh, and then and then the, you know they say cut and apparently Henry Thomas went Ugh, gross and then she, I don't know who the actress was but she was very upset that was a lot of time not very sad and crying so Stephen wanted to avoid that problem. <laughs> like, <sighs> you know, like a third or fourth take wouldn't kill anybody. I'm just saying. But whatever, we got it in one or two. That's great. Thanks, Stephen. I feel so protected. That's great. It's wonderful. It was hey, he was ahead of his time looking out for the Me Too movement, yeah. you know, years yeah. before it ever was a movement. Yeah. So I mean, I don't want to I don't want to take anything away from Andrea Canetti in the fifth grade. But, you know, this was our this was our moment. <laughs> so speaking of movements, what was how was it for you? We didn't Gary? hear that, but she said she loved him. I heard uh. it. 
She said it. We want to hear it. But, but, yeah, say it into the mic, Carrie. That your first Make Holly- it official. Was that your first Hollywood kiss? Yeah. Yeah, tell your story. <laughs> <laughs> Tell your story. Um, I was more nervous than Sean, I would say. Oh, so wow. Sweet. Is that because he was five years younger than you? Or because, yeah, it's exactly. <laughs> She's like, am I going to get arrested for this? <laughs> <laughs> I was You're thinking the same thing. I'm just saying, I would be worried. There's a, there's a little age difference. <laughs> Back then, five years. Between a 13-year-old and It's a key, it's a key couple year old, of years. It's a but critical. now, can you imagine? I mean, now it's like, at my age, it's 70. It's like five years is eternity. Nothing. It's nothing. nothing. Like a day. <laughs> if, I'm, if I'm like two days younger than somebody, I feel really good. Uh, so when I read the script to the Goonies, you know, I wasn't a big reader as a kid, so but I, I sped through it. It was incredible. Pirates and all this stuff and getting to kiss the girl, which was amazing. I misread the second kiss. There was a mo- I can't remember how far into the making the movie we were when it became clear that you actually like Brand and you kiss Brand at the end of the movie. And I was like, I thought I like... Be- oh, it sucks. Oh, you mean like <laughs> in your version, in your mind, you ended up with I her thought, and she well, kissed you again at the end of the movie? Something like that. Like, when do we that? shoot uh, the end sequence where know. we really You know what they say, <laughs> that you read a script, you go, bullshit, bullshit, my part. Yeah. Bullshit, bullshit, my part. Yeah. I didn't. I hadn't really worked out the its relationship to the story. It's wish fulfillment, basically, right? I mean, yeah. The question on the other side of the room. Question over here to the left, against the wall here. That right way. Hey guys, uh, my question was: If you could go back and play any other part in the Goonies other than the one you played, which would you pick, and why? Ah. Well, I'd go back and ask for more money. <laughs> Damn straight. Mm-hmm. Jeez, if we only knew, right? <sighs> no, no, no. Oh, you wouldn't have asked for more money? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Stopped him in his tracks. If I had to play a different character who didn't get to have a moment with Andy or get more money. Right. Well, yes, exactly. What's That's money? The thing. You got money, the bonus. Money you goes the away. Bonus. Those you got the bonus either forever. way. The moments last forever. Aww. 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 Are we gonna get all right, so uh, are we going to move on from this yeah. topic or are we going to just we talk about that. them making we, out all we day? We could do that. <laughs> right over here, over here, we have a question. If you could live a different life and choose a different career, what would it be? And this is for all of you. Oh. How old are you? 12. Great question. question. Good thinking. The cool thing about acting is you sort of get you get to have a lot of different careers. Every time you do another show or another movie or another play or something like that, you're experiencing life in a little bit different way. I'm 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 studying uh, econ- or I'm studying public policy right now, and the class I'm taking right now is in it's called managerial economics. And aside from the math, which is very hard and I'm not good at, I love economics it like touches everything it's it's about how people organize themselves and relate to each other so i said to my dad the other day i'm glad i wasn't good in math in like middle school because i could have been an econo- uh, an economist that could have been fun it's true i i liked home ec when i was in school too <laughs> <laughs> i think that was home ed joey home ed <laughs> Me? Um, geez. You know, I guess I feel like kind of very lucky that I've I've done so many things, right? Like I've I, I, I started out just being an actor and I felt like I didn't know anything about the rest of the world. So I was like, I need to do more things. So then, you know, kind of like being a bit of a philanthropist or being, a, you know, working in a little bit of politics and working in a little bit of this and that. You know what I mean? I've moved my stuff around being a musician, being in the music world, producing other artists. So I've really kind of had that opportunity to, to you know, do so many different jobs between directing, writing, producing, you know, there's a lot. So I'm very grateful that I've had a colorful spectrum of options through my life. I've been lucky in that way. Um, I guess we all could. Key too, you know, key uh, for the last few years has been doing fight coordination, right? Directing no, and... No, no, uh, 
No. Oh well. No. I don't know Here's that. the thing. Here's the thing. Uh, the answer to your question is, you know, acting is such an amazing and wonderful uh, profession. Uh, I can't imagine doing anything else. And but you did. Do, what's interesting you did, well, is you did you did do some directing, right? Yes, I I, I got I got. <laughs> I I I uh, uh, I Corey, I stepped you're not away. the moderator. I'm the moderator. Uh, you're now. not the moderator. <laughs> All right. Uh, I stepped away from acting for uh, uh, 20 years, and uh, and I just recently got back into acting. So that's how much I love acting. Uh, so it's just you know it's just like Sean said you know as an actor you get to be so many different things you know if you want you know if you get lucky enough you get to play a role whether. You're an accountant or a doctor or, you know, a detective. I mean, whatever. I mean, the, the range is wide open uh, as long as there's opportunities out there for you. But it's just, you know, it's just, I think it's a privilege to be an actor. A lawyer. Okay. Could have been a Carrie. Lawyer. <laughs> a lawyer. Carrie? A lawyer. I could have done the lawyer thing. All right. Carrie? Can you skip me? Yes, okay. <laughs> Robert? She's so sweet. So shy. Uh, why do you want to be skipped? Because just the other day I was doing something, I was reading something, and I thought, oh my God, I, that should have been, that's what, I, that's what I would like to do or would have done if I had a whole different life. What was it? I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I seriously can't remember. But how can you not remember such I, a, a, a bright moment So in life? that's why I wanted more time to see oh. if I can remember. What it was that I was right. trying to remember more time. Remember what it was, see now, if you well, were the moderator, you would have picked up the cue. <laughs> <laughs> what the heck? It was. It was something like, um, you know, like journalism and something and like travel. Know. It had travel in it. You wanted to be a, a no, a like, head, like, like when a, you go in an like, anchor woman. When you oh. no, that's Christine. I'm poor. No. What? Would you guys stop talking for Sounds her like. Talk to you? Sounds like. We, we need to like, know. It was like, you know those people who like find out things? Investigative then, reporter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. An archaeologist. That's what I would be. Okay. We got Robert. it. My turn. Yes. Uh, yeah, I, I think arts, the arts have been always part of my life uh, since a kid. And I just love whether it's singing, acting, writing, directing. I just love all aspects of art. Now, that being said, Elon Musk doesn't do too bad. <laughs> okay, we got to wrap things Pre up. President. Yes, there we go. There we go. Working on it. There you go. You and me, let's do it, man. We're going to be co-presidents? Let's do it. Well, vice and president and vice president, we could do, you know. All right, we'll arm wrestle over who gets to go Asden first. Feldman, Feldman, either way. Okay. Would we, you guys vote for us? Oh, you, hell yeah, hell yeah. Look at uh, that. All right. We, have to, we, we got something there. We have to wrap this up as sad as that sounds. We can't thank you guys enough, but if you guys would like to say a short little something to all the fans before you scram, just a little hey or whatever, uh, they're going to be headed back to their table. They got photo ops, all that stuff. If you just kind of like to say a, a little goodbye or a little thanks to the fans or whatever you feel like. Thank you for your, for all of you, thank you so much for letting us know how you care about us. And um, we really appreciate you. And uh, who would have thunk that people would remember a movie, this movie, oh, it was 40 years later. And the generations of children you that did. have followed it. You did, do you remember when we were on the set? This is a true story. I said to Joey, I said, what was it like working with Tom Cruise? And he said to me, he was all right, but you know what, kid? They're gonna be asking me the same thing about you one day. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So he knew. He yep. knew we would be here 35 years later. Very sweet. Uh, I'll say this. There's a very big Italian uh, rap artist, music artist. I mean, huge. He's like the Jay-Z and the, the Kanye West all together in What's Italy. His name, Robert? His name is J-Ax in Italy, Alessandro. He's in Italy. He's got a Goonie tattoo on his leg of all the Goonies and the Fratellis. And I had the opportunity to tape him, and I played it for Dick Donner uh, live, where he said that Goonies to him was more important than War and Peace. Wow. This is this art. And he said that Italy was the Goonies of, Amer of Europe. <laughs> yeah. So it's all because of you guys, as Joey said and everyone feels here, 
how important the fans are over the years keeping this alive, showing to your children's, your children, children, and uh, God bless all of we you. We love you. There you we go. We love you. you. Thank we you, love you guys. Thank we you. love you. Thank you so Never much. Say, well, well, got a little something from Sean. I, I got one. Got one real quick from I Sean, got one. and then we're going to book. Remember, with all the adventure and all the fun and excitement, Goonies was about something. It was about saving their homes. We never say die. <laughs> we never do. But there's something very powerful about the idea that there are some things in this world that are worth protecting and they're worth saving and your friends and your family and your home is it. So Pittsburgh and people who've come from around, let's take good care of our home in this country and around the world, yeah? And our neighbors. That is and the way our to neighbors. do it. Give it up. Oh, this is absolutely magic. Thank you, guys. Back at your double. Hi, this is Michael Shanks, and you're watching Phantom Spotlight. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. The fate of the universe may depend on it. And have fun, and follow your fandom.